What's going on guys? Jeremy, back again with another exploration. So today we're in Southern Georgia, here in the United States, and we're about to explore this very dark time capsule that's buried deep in the woods. So without further ado, I say we go on ahead and get to the video. I take you guys outside and I give you the story of why this place is abandoned. Let's hop to it. It's all too often, families torn apart over the very place that held them. A place of refuge, a place of so many beautiful memories, is now tainted by the tragedy of greed. This is the story of Jack and Dorothy and the home that held their family. Jack was born in 1914 and grew up in this country home his father built in the late 1800s. He was always the go-getter type and believed he would one day be the mayor of this small Georgia town. After marrying Dorothy, his high school sweetheart, his father gifted the newlyweds the house to raise a family in. But tragically, the couple suffered the loss of two of their children, one of them only an infant. But despite their grief, they held each other together with the love they shared and overcame the obstacles of despair. Jack going on to being elected as mayor and Dorothy raising their six other children at home. As time went on, the children all grew up and moved away while Jack and Dorothy lived out their years in the home. But in 1992, Jack died at the age of 78. But not long after Jack died, Dorothy passed away without leaving an official will for her children, despite the verbal agreements on how their inheritance would be split. And although this beautiful home held a love story that lasted for decades, it too was laid to rest in 2009 after the children entered a drawn out legal battle with one another, failing to come to an agreement on how to divide the estate. And now, like the vines that have swallowed this once beautiful place, the unrelenting nature of greed consumes everything in its path. A family that once was, the home that held them together, and even the love story of Jack and Dorothy. So now, let's step inside of this place and let's see what's still left behind. All right guys, so here we are. We're walking up on this place. You can barely even see it through uh, all the thick brush, but uh, it's there. As you saw in the intro, it looks pretty dilapidated. Hopefully it'll, it'll be really nice inside though. Wow, look at this. Look how it's just like suddenly appearing through the brush. This has definitely been abandoned for a long time. Look at this. These are the original steps to the front porch, but they're all completely overgrown with these thick vines. Got some wicker furniture still out on the porch. That's a good sign. Some more furniture here. Look at this old rocking chair. Look at that. That's so cool. Very creepy, very Southern. I imagine back in the day, this house would face these railroad tracks and all these woods weren't here. You could probably see the train roll by right out front from the front porch. Look at this big hornet's nest from years ago, still on the door. Very cool looking door, by the way. Wow, look at this. It looks like a time capsule in here. All this beautiful Victorian furniture still here. Wow, the floor beneath my feet is crunching. I'm gonna have to be very careful where I walk. And look at the beautiful floors. Wow, guys. 
we have found an amazing time capsule, it looks like. And look at this furniture here. It's beautiful items in this house already. Really beautiful place with this big rug in the middle of the floor. Definitely some very high quality antiques that are in this place. What a beautiful piece. Love how it's all curved. It's still full. Look at this, old Christmas lights. It's a VHS of Rebel Without a Cause and Ghost classic movies. I remember when I was a kid, we used to record VHS tapes. And look at this, the night the animals talked. Twas the night before Christmas. Definitely some Christmas movies in here. It's like this drawer is like Christmas themed. What are these? It's a puppy training guide. <laughs> More VHS tapes. This drawer's stuck. Definitely don't want to break it trying to get it open. Very cool, look at this woodwork. It's a really beautiful piece. Again, like I said, there's some high dollar items in this place. Let's see what's over here. So this looks like it was probably a dining room. Perhaps this is the dining room table. And a fireplace here. The brick mantle. And again, so much antiques that are in here. Look at these pieces. I love this green color. Really cool looking chair. Yeah, so I believe this is a dining room. Let me see if I can squeeze through here. I'm not sure if I can. I imagine this is the kitchen. Oh, also, this is really cool, this pink and yellow. I see that color a lot in these old southern homes. And I imagine at one point there was a really beautiful chandelier that hung over the dining room table here. Let's keep going further along. Gonna be a tight squeeze through this doorway. this, how the house is completely collapsed in right here. Oh my God. So many beautiful cabinets in this place. And look at this. There's some china still left. I imagine this cabinet at one point was completely full of china. I love this old bench here that's like kind of built into the house. Oh, and look at this, guys. There's still some silverware here. A little bit of china that's still left over. Definitely some kitchen supplies. And it looks like table linens here. Probably now mice homes. This is wild. Definitely entering into the kitchen now. Wow, what a beautiful little kitchen. I'm gonna hit my light to show you what the sunlight looks like coming through. Wow, look at this place. So beautiful. And I love how 
natural decay of this paint here. Okay, so beautifully sometimes it looks almost like art. And this old oven, look at this. So cool. There's still alcohol bottles in here. Gin and rum. Oh, and look at this. It looks like perhaps old high school photos and family photos on this refrigerator here. Oh, this is all Leave It to Beaver. Look at this. The hypnotist, Wally Cleaver. Family time. The Cleaver family. Wow. If you guys have watched my other videos, I always check the fridge and this is a good one. Check this out. Oh, this is disgusting. All these condiments that were left behind from years ago. And look, there's even more up top. All this old coffee from no telling how long ago. And I don't even want to know what's wrapped in that tin foil back there. Probably old meat from way back when. Probably want to shut this refrigerator door. <laughs> So disgusting. Look at this. All prescription bottles, vitamins still in the cabinet. North Carolina. Ooh, this is a cool mug. Bambi. Classic. And look, here's his name. Jack. I'm pretty amazed at how dilapidated this house is on the outside, but how much stuff is still left on the inside. So this is definitely like a utility room, laundry room, washer and dryer over there. Look at these old umbrellas, still stored away. Yeah, this is wild, guys. I'm loving this house. I feel like there's so many stories in this house. This telephone, look at this. An old rotary phone. That is so cool. And so many more magnets. Got Snoopy. This calendar here is dated for 2008. With these kitchen aprons still hanging up. This is so sad. And this little pantry here. All this food still left behind. Food is a big deal in any house, in any culture, and it always brings the entire family together. And it's always interesting the type of decorations the family uses in any kitchen, showing basically what the family loved, what they were passionate about, and even what they were entertained by. It looks like we have an attic up here, which you better believe I'm going inside of. And we have a basement down here. So I might as well go into the basement first. See what's down here. It's very, it's already very creepy down here. And oh, these stairs are completely rotted, which tells me this basement completely flooded out. Look at all these cans. 
Oh my God, look at all these cans. There's thousands of them in these trash bags. You can't even get to the basement. It's all Coors Light cans. Like how did these even wind up down here? Were there people throwing parties down here? It's so random. Now I wonder what's up in the attic. Very creepy up here. This attic's full of stuff. Old storage. There's no telling what's up here. Looks like quite a bit of Christmas decorations. Kind of what you would expect in the attic of an American Southern home. There's no telling what's in this stuff. I could spend hours up here, but then I would be stirring up so much dust and breathing that stuff in. So I think it's time for us to go back downstairs. Look at this. Look at this, why are all these, all oh, these are peacock feathers, look at this. This whole living room's covered with them. This is so random. If you guys have a guess of why there's peacock feathers throughout the room, let me know what you think in the comments below. And look at what's above us. This is wild. It's almost like a bell tower. I wonder what this was for. I've never seen this in a house in my life. I wanna know what your thoughts are on what this was even used for. And I wonder if there was a massive chandelier that used to hang down. And look at this, guys. Look at this beautiful piano. Still left behind. And it sounds like all the keys still work on it. And this piano is in amazing condition for sitting in a house like this that's so dilapidated. Like look at this next room where we came in at, starting to completely fall apart. And then you walk into this room and it's like nature has completely skipped over it. It's really interesting how sometimes it seems like nature is very selective. It'll completely destroy one room and then pass right over the next, preserving everything that's still inside of it. For now. I love the architecture in this house and look at this beautiful furniture. And some of this stuff is in excellent condition. Obviously this one is not. I'm blown away at how amazing this house is. I did not expect to find this today, guys, but I'm glad I did. So we got a bedroom over here. And look at this. This is an old television. I've seen these in photos, but I've never seen one of these in real life. The brand is called a Philco. This has got to be one of the coolest things I've, I've seen in a while. Just sitting in this abandoned house out in the middle of the woods. An old jewelry box. So there was definitely a little girl who used to live in this room. Gosh, look at this. And look, all these cloths were probably made by the family members or someone in the family. 
And look, this whole drawer is full of them. It's a very cool lamp. And look at this wall. A child drew this. It's a shelf with books. There's a stuffed animal puppy, a pile of books, a fishbowl here, a plant bowl, more books, a globe. It's very detailed. Look, lights on the walls. Some artwork that they drew. And look at this, a make-believe lamp that used to sit on this table. And look at this, there's more here. A big piece of art that used to make-believe hang over the fireplace mantle. And look what she drew here, a fire under the mantle. This is in incredible, guys. There's so many stories in this house. And an old stroller next to this single size bed. And this is where she would sleep with her blankets and sheets still on the bed. She had her own little phone right here. And look at this beautiful sofa over here. This blue and gold, very royal. This is absolutely incredible, guys. And look at this, she drew a cat resting on a sofa and a blanket on the back of the sofa with pillows and a mirror here. So she's a very artistic girl with quite an imagination as most kids are. And then somehow we, we lose it over time and we kind of lose that childlike sense of wonder. This room very much reminds me of that. And check this out. Look at these old women's hats. This is so cool. This looks like it was from the 1920s for sure. These are very old, very old hats. So neat. I want to check this out. I don't know how many of you remember these. This is like some early 90s stuff. I remember my older sister used to be obsessed with these trolls. And that was a fad that quickly came and left. Kind of like Furbies in like the late 90s. And look at this room. We have another amazing bedroom. And look at this and this detail in the wood of the headboard of this bed. And a big fireplace. I wonder if this was the master bedroom of the house. So this looks like definitely more of an adult room. A bunch of car magazines. Perhaps this was an older brother of hers. And if you notice, there's so many windows in this house. This house was very well lit. But look how it's all just thick forest that's grown up all around it. 
on all sides. And guys, look at this. I just found a diary. It reads, nice progressive dreams last night. I can't remember them. Yesterday was a roller coaster ride. I got dressed and made my way down to Warwick. I changed out all the CDs in the car before I left. That certainly made for a shorter trip. Traffic was heavy on the interstate. It was a damn hot day. When I got to Warwick, Ronnie was in the kitchen with mom. He's aged, looking more and more like mom. Sweet, gentle energy. And it goes on and on, talking about her day. It's dated for Monday, June 19, 2006. It's 7.43 a.m. And it's an entire notebook of it. Just still left behind. All their thoughts, their life in this notebook, sitting in this empty room, in this empty house. Look at this. Psychic empowerment. The other side and back. Psychic's guide to our world and beyond. The nature of the psyche. Spiritual path. Power versus force. All these books are centered around self-awareness, spirituality, and psychic abilities. Who was this person? Through time into healing, discover the power of regression therapy to erase trauma and transform mind, body, and relationships. And guys, I have to say, not to stereotype, but I grew up in a very similar town as this, a very Southern town in the United States. And I have to say, it's extremely rare to find books like this or people who are interested in these types of topics. It's kind of fascinating. I, I'm very interested to know who this person was, if they're still alive and what they're doing today. And look at this closet, guys. Completely full. Old Hawaiian shirts. Looks like Probably a lot of cheesy clothes. This is incredible. And his hat's still hanging up on the hooks. Oh, this is Eleanor Roosevelt. In this photo. Look at this, these old letters. Obviously, I'm going to blur out this information because I don't want to give the location of this place away because I don't want this place to be destroyed or looted. Wow. So I just found a bunch more of the peacock feathers. And look at this. It's like a hoarder corner of the house. There's so much stuff in here. It's like they completely just threw all this stuff in this corner of the house and kind of kept the door closed to forget about it. This is wild. It looks like there's probably some valuable stuff in here. Definitely a lot of cassette tapes, speaker, and an amplifier over there. Some old records, vinyls. Wow. This is wild. Got a neat looking bathroom with this stand-up shower here and then a tub, and look at this. Still towels hanging over the tub. Artwork still hanging there. Very, uh, very strange choice for artwork. You can tell this wasn't staged either. This is the original artwork that hung here because of how the paint has chipped over it. This house has completely been untouched since it was abandoned, I believe, with the exception of probably a few looters, but not many, judging by all the valuable stuff that I'm seeing in this house. I feel like this house is a very well-kept secret. There's so many closets just completely full of stuff. Wow, and it's all piled high with antiques. And I'm starting to think that perhaps Whoever lived here maybe had a hoarding issue. All right, check this out. I love these old light switch buttons. 
So cool. Okay, going further along over here, and it looks like we have a complete time capsule of a bedroom. And this carpet, it's so soft. Very, um, very 70s in here. Like these really cool curtains hanging over the windows. Again, very 70s in here. Lots of tile. Perhaps they um, had a lot of spare tile in this trunk for repairs. Look at this. So this is what it says. From every human being, there rises a light that reaches straight to heaven. And when two souls that are destined to be together find each other, their streams of light flow together and a single brighter light goes forth from their united being. It's a closet full of VHSs. If you guys have seen my recent video of the porn star's castle in Belgium, then you've seen the porn closet. Luckily, this looks like all pretty G-rated movies. Man, look at this bed just completely made. And the bed sheets match the floor. This nightstand kind of reminds me of my nightstand, just full of random stuff, old letters, pins, rubber bands, just knickknacks. So here's their bathroom. Again, just a really neat looking bathroom and this beautiful decay that's falling from the walls. And a medicine cabinet that looks completely full. It's got all the stuff you would imagine in a bathroom, all still left behind. I mean, then again, who would want to come and take this? <laughs> Even if you were moving out. Got another fairly large bedroom in here. Really cool looking bed. Definitely reminds me of a bed you would see in a castle in like Europe or something. And a very small bed over here like for, a, for an infant. So now I'm starting to wonder perhaps if this was the master bedroom. Guys, and look at this stack of letters. And they're dated November 4th, 1922 from Atlanta. We have to at least look in one of them. I'm so curious about this. This is almost like, um, this is almost like archeology. span Wow. And these are all old letters. And this one's from Pittsburgh. And I don't see a date on it. Perhaps there'll be a date here in the letter. National Bank of Fitzgerald, Georgia. And look how all these old bank letters are all handwritten. Oh, this was dated March 5th, 1921. This is incredible. You know, I say this a lot, guys, but this is almost like going through a museum and finding old artifacts like this. It's kind of its own form of archaeology, really. And here he is, the man himself, Jack. This is more than likely their room. Wow, all their books. And 
look at this. An old football helmet. This thing has got to be so old. Like there's, look how they were made of this old plastic helmet with these little leather buttons to strap it onto your head. They definitely don't make them like this anymore. And I wonder if this football is from his college or perhaps the game that they went to. And look at this, guys. It's a plaque from Georgia Tech. And it makes me wonder if this football is also from that college, along with the helmet from way back in the day. And there's more Georgia Tech memorabilia here as well. It looks like an old uh, railroad hat, like an old operator's hat. Very cool. Yet again, another closet full of clothes. And most of these clothes here look like men's clothes. I imagine this was Jack's closet. Definitely all like button up shirts. Definitely Jack's closet. All of his old clothes. So this is now leading us back out to this living area. So it's looking like we've pretty much seen the entirety of this house and I definitely don't want to be walking through these thick woods in the dark. At any rate, thank you guys so much for watching this video and also I want to know what your thoughts are on this place and I want to know why you think that so much of this stuff is still left behind. That's the mystery of this place that I don't quite understand. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, stay off the beaten path.